Welcome, everybody, to part 23 of Blue Fuckery. And so, yeah. yeah in now the that last... Teos' heart has finally been broken, he's reached phase four. Ironically, so... though, in the last part, we actually got a world that had a gimmick to it, but properly explained there it. There. It's literally called Blazer Field. <laughs> you know, I'll be... All right. I'll, uh, see, while we're getting to the final dungeon, might as well I'll finish with the achievements that I started in the previous part. Go ahead. All right, we, get, clear, we get what you mean, Joe, but don't worry. Clear mecha shooting, we don't damage. While escorting the wagon, make sure that it takes no damage. Um, next out the rank for one dragon class, must go from 98 to 99 without using a heart enhancement. Um, max out the rank for Minotaur, then Phoenix. Then max out of all dragon, Minotaur and Phoenix. Make all your characters level 99. Find and obtain the rare ultimate weapon bracelet, find and obtain all the, the rare final war necklace, and the rare dragon bracelet. Activate all the warp devices, this one uh, the one that was only in the previous part that sparkled me the hint for the achievements. Remove all bearers in the game, Fli fill up the monster record, fill up the item record, um, save your goal, you need one more uh, one million. Um, then oh, hold on, yeah, there's a cutscene happening now. Sure, so. sure, sure. Sorry, they're landing. If we go in, we may not be able to get back out. Oh, it's the game telling you it's your point of yeah, no return. Yeah, might have no return. What do you want to do? I want to go because I want to get this over as quickly as I can. Sure, why not? We have four parts. Well, five, including this one. But four parts after the this. I don't dungeon really that long. And doesn't this look clearly like the Northern Crater, by the way? That... <laughs> From Final yeah. Fantasy VII. Uh, I wonder if the final boss will be a ripoff of that. No, it's not, but uh, it's. Uh, I'll have some words to say about the final boss. You're floating How in can the you air. feel an earthquake when you're in the air? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get an interesting. Why don't you know I forgot? There's the. Oh, um... let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Those are all spikes of a giant Godzilla desert monster. No, it's not that, but, uh. Well, actually, I forgot about the. I forgot about the airship, the reprise of the airship minigame, but after the airship minigame, we're going to get some more lore, and let's just say it's. weird, to say the least. Basically, we're going to explain what the hell those blue things even are. Don't worry, Joe, but the explanations will come. Oh, hi, Shoes Grandpa. Oh, that's right, Shoes Grandpa still exists. What's happening now? Zola, take us even higher. Uh, shouldn't it be lower? Nah, I guess higher probably to avoid what's going on yeah, on the ground. Avoid. Bubble shield. Oh, Wait, in the space? The now. Okay. Oh, no, Jibral is being destroyed. Guess, oh, no, that's, oh, no, never mind, I Wait, forgot. It's, it's actually revealed fuck? now. We're Turns separate, out... they're splitting the planet in two. What? Turns uh, out, Teo... It's Teo, only can now. Turns <laughs> out, Teo, the ancients roboticized the world to make, to have it, to have it have mechanical stuff like this. And they created these cubic Cube? astro- cubic asteroids. Well, plenty of people are <laughs> gonna- Well, I'm pretty sure most of the people what in Gibraltar- What the fuck are you smoking, Sakaguchi? And Castle Gibraltar was conveniently in the halfway point. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone in Gibraltar is gonna be dead now. Also, it's okay, It's okay, Java. They were all evacuated to the safe zone. I saw something strange. Oh, flashback. It was a huge complex this is what she saw while, while she was away from us. You know, it would have been nice to see this when it actually happened. It would serve as foreshadowing, yeah, at least. Even Sola thinks it was too crazy as an idea. Isn't that like the equivalent of saying, Nah, they wouldn't do something that stupid. Nope, they did it. Walk through gravity. Sakaguchi, you can't just throw this incredibly bizarre shit at us and not even try to explain. Well, I understand. Oh my god, there's a light side and a dark side. They wanted to do similar to Final Fantasy V, where the war was played in two with the seeding of x -Tep. But here is just out of nowhere bizarre, of course. We oh. need to have this. And ominous pipe organ. So this is what uh, this, is, this is Nene's theme. This is what Crash Bandicoot, the giant that the huge adventure slash access to uh, the in Cortex was speaking through yeah. the world. You know what that part reminded me of Jova, by the way? It reminded me of that episode from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, 
where Sonic is being forced by by Eggman to lose at a race so he can save Tails. And then when he's doing it, he gets all these visions of, so of Eggman's head going, you, sh you have to lose the race! The, the Mobians are Tails! The Mobians are Tails! <laughs> Uh, this is how the world was in ancient times. Well, no wonder you people died out. You don't have the proper solar radiation to keep you alive. I just died. It freaking sucks. This also, could you speak up a bit? Yeah, the sound mixing can be. Yeah, yeah. This game also has some sound mixing problems, much like um, Sonic Adventure 2 or Fire Prince Raph in the default settings. Sometimes. When you have loud music, it, it can be a bit hard to listen to what the characters say, especially if they're whispering. Trust oh. me, everybody. I'm going to... Uh, trust me, everybody. I'm going to start my Fire Fencer F playthrough with the default settings, just so you guys can see for yourselves how bad the sound mixing is. But after two parts, I'll change I'll change to my, per, to my actual customized settings so we can actually listen to people. I'll just say this. If I have... To mess this around with the audio settings so that I can actually hear people talking, you have to play sound design. I mean, oh, no, hey, look at that! All the stuff that we fixed! You know. Actually, I think it's a flashback. Huh? Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. He said, Oh, you've seen what happens to people who suffer the consequences. Only we fixed those, so, uh. Not luck. Kind of screw the consequences. Yeah. You were gonna say she really, by the way? No, um, what I was saying was, I mean, sound mixing in, in this uh, area isn't that difficult to rectify, really. Not really, no. It's, uh, it, 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 tells, it speaks even volumes when the PS4 enhanced version of Reference Raph, which is one I'll be doing mostly, uh, they even added a vocal highlight uh, extra option for you to fix it there, which is a, a, literally an option that tells you how to, how lower the music will low will lower when the characters speak. Again, uh, I have I have no idea why the hell could it's the same mini game as the last time too. No, it's no, just... no, but why are we in Sky Sanctuary now with the music? <laughs> mm, I don't see, I don't hear it. I kind of do. Anyway, that maybe it's just going. maybe it's just because I don't really think of this particular type of instrumentation when I think of Sky Sanctuary. But... Um, yeah, it, it it's just one of those things. Why couldn't you actually fix the sound mix instead of asking me to do it myself? I, I just it whatever. I'll 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 talk more about it in the actual playthrough. So now you have to re to repel the land shark, uh, or in this case, the air shark. It's interesting because. I, for a moment there, I thought I was actually going to have to wait until after this minigame, but no, it turns out that the cutscene happened. Uh, again, this game is so forgettable that I even forget uh, the specific order of the of the, of the set pieces in cutscenes. So let me guess, in true tradition, if you hit the, the engines, you'll do more damage. Uh, well, not so much that. It's more so that uh, you have two methods of attack, the machine gun and missiles. Missiles are obviously damage more, but they're limited, and you have to get more uh, missile uh, pickups to recover your missile supply. And again, make sh this version of the mini game is much harder, so make sure you always use your machine gun to destroy the missiles before they get to you. Because if you're not careful with this, but unlike the previous version of the mini game, we cannot activate an, e an easy mode for it. So you really have to pay attention to this. This is actually this is actually one of the. the it's actually probably the most intense gameplay section of the game. It's not even a JRPG involved thing. It's just a it's, it's just a set piece. Mini game more so. Shoot the health pickups to get health, and they're blue even though. Hard the is this music? <laughs> the, 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 it the sounds health, like a health. bagpipe. Digitized. Consider it. Consider it. All right, I'm, all right. I'm gonna finish the the achievements. Go, 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 go ahead. All right, you, you close the flying fortress door without fighting the mecha robots. You help pull in the flying fortress without angering the Gorgo giants. I guess making the duty uh, flawlessly. You ask a cloak without calling. You arrive at the nearest location before the time bomb went off. You save Cloak from being choked by the scholar. You summon shoe shadows. I guess it's the one uh, uh, in the village with the tree. You escape without being stoned by the. Ostrich. Oh, the one. Okay. Uh, 
You achieve the highest ranks for one class in the killer of the killer bat shadow, by the saber tube, the one of Marmaru and uh, Zola. You destroy the mecha bat uh, base of machine guns in mecha shooting stage 2. You got a bonus for completing the moon laser perfectly. You clear mecha shooting stage 3 with no damage. Uh, all rank for uh, the bat and saber tooth. You got all mecha par park types and complete all the enhancements. You got all the dragon items. You play from battle more than 50 times and you were ambushed more than 50 times. The end. Well, I guess it's pretty straightforward, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Oh my uh, god, this is still going. It is. Uh, I would also like to, while this is going on, I would also like to quote some actual uh, reviews that the game got when it first came out. Uh, from. Well, actually, no, the Xbox 360 Gamer magazine is biased. <laughs> I wonder so the, why. So is the official Xbox magazine. Let's get. Here's Game Informer, because we all know how much Java loves Game Informer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, it depends on what reviews we're talking about. I mean, because uh, some uh, of the reviews uh, are actually written well on the magazine. Uh, 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 the, Others the review aren't. Is no longer oh, the review is no longer available on the website. I can I, I can just read the thing. Okay, from its astounding visuals uh, to the constantly compelling gameplay, this experience will make role-playing veterans recall the the good old days and give newcomers the opportunity to start creating some memories. So, too, are you recalling the good old days right now? Yes, but in a wrong way because I keep comparing the bullshit moments to what we were good in the old days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the best way to sum this up is like, Oh well, my god, it's still not dead. You know, I think the best way to sum this up is like, well, it's like, say, okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying that, you know, ukulele is as bad as this game, but it's, it has a similar problem. Ukulele is good. But... I'm not saying it's bad. What I'm saying is like, well, it and ukulele suffer the same problem. Yes, it's going to remind you of the good old days, like, you know, the old days. The problem is like, well, it does it without knowing what to modernize properly. And the stuff it does try to modernize, it fails at. Like, ukulele, for all it's good or bad, we have to admit, it being a one-to-one -one thing of Banjo and Kazooie, while definitely being almost advertised, hurts it in a lot of areas, which is sadly the case. That's what I mean. It's like, well, this feels like, yes, we're trying to do what the old times did, but without mixing things up enough. That's probably that. We had to wait till, yeah, we had to wait till 2014 for level 5 to do it. Well, hold and on, look, hold on, hold on. Didn't last, hold on. Didn't last Odyssey come out before Nino Kuni? Oh, well, well, yeah, true. Fine. I yeah, think you mean Odyssey. you. But that also sticks to the basic. It's just made a good game from what I can see. Yeah. yeah. yeah what I'm yeah, saying yeah. is, like, you know, I Nino think Kuni, I. Nino Kuni, on the other hand, tried some more modern elements. What uh, I'm saying is that I think I can see where the positive reception for this game may have come from back in the day. In that, you know, for people who really just wanted a touch of the old school stuff with a bit of extra fluff here and there, I guess this is. Probably what they wanted, either that or it's because Sakaguchi had a lot of brand power behind him. That could have been that too. Oh, well, then again, that didn't say that in the nine from all the skating reviews. So I'm just gonna chalk it up to this being what people, I guess, at the time wanted. And over time, when that's not what they wanted, now people start to realize that this game ain't all that cracked up to be. And like I said, I will say there are some redeeming things of this game that I actually can find to enjoy. It's just it's gonna be up to you whether or not this is the kind of experience you want. And, okay, I will say this. While I've compared this to negatively to a lot of things that are even worse games, I will say that the overall quality of this game is borderline. What am I mean by borderline? It's like, well, something that's on the base of being rotten, but just isn't. It's on the fine line. It's literally down the middle, neutral, whatever. Trust me, I mean, I go, actually experiencing this game has been something else. It's bored and what not me. It has somewhat gotten me riled up because of its stupidity here and there. But at the end of the day, I can call this game ironically neutral. Even though some of my reactions may contradict that notion because I guess they gave what they promised. And, well, judging off it back in the day, seeing as how this was kind of one of those launch sort of Xbox 360 ones, I guess I can understand some of the wonkiness in regards to visuals here and there, which I'll admit actually aren't all bad. Really. Now, about this music track, what the hell is going on? I don't know, Joe. It Wematsu sounds like... For a really long time. Wematsu was drunk. I don't know. 
Oh look, let's see what IGN thinks of this game. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um what? Uh, okay, uh, the consensus. Uh, Blue Dragon is not the most original RPG as far as design goes, nor is it the first must-have RPG on a Microsoft console. The pacing for the first half of the game is far too slow to stay engaging for all of the hard for the RPG fans, and the story is not nearly as epic as the multiple disc 50 hour plus game implies. For those, for those needing a solid, traditional RPG experience on the Xbox 360, Blue Dragon will fit the bill. What do you think, Taylor? Does it fit the bill? Ah. Uh, in a sense that uh, I want to get refunded uh, by every whatever get the store I get, huh. I get to. Get uh, so what? Like, the first half of that uh, consensus was actually, you know, like fair enough, but they kind of trailed off there. I guess in regards to fitting the bill, I guess they mean that yeah, you're getting literally what you paid for in the most literal basic sense. But right. it's not even that, Jova. Aside from the basics, which I would not mind. The game is actually bad and unfinished in a lot of parts. Oh, definitely. That. It's lacking in some planet. regards, for sure. And some regards. Maybe it has something to do with magic. Magic? Yeah. There you go, Teo. That's your, that's your explanation for how this is possible. It's magic. We don't have to explain it. Of course. I think I can we have spent the entire game getting emphasis on this super technology that the ancient seed of course we had the shadow magic but we also had all the technology but this one in particular no it's all because it's because of magic and apparently the ancients created the world with magic and technology yes oh wow well, the frame rate for the first few yeah. seconds there I mean, I guess because it's a big area here, so what, can we, like, go to different realms and worlds now? No, you can only go to this specific cube. Why would you even bother giving us that whole area, then? Uh... uh... Anyway. Okay, okay. Here's, a fun f here's a fun fact. Uh, this boss is very nearly impossible. Uh, well, in impossible mode. Uh, I did manage to defeat it, though, after multiple tries. Oh, that's why there was a jump cut. Yeah. You know, we're kind of acting a bit nonchalant for what's supposed to be the final dungeon. You shouldn't have eaten that. Nene's around here somewhere. We don't know if he set any traps. Mmm, it's delicious! I guess we were worried for nothing. Tail. You sure about that? Tail, why didn't Sakaguchi give his characters a brain? Well, technically, he did it for this occasion to cloak huh? because oh, oh, cool, a T Rex, red dinosaur, I guess. And it's oh, red. Good. For, for your, good for your hat, it so you can control it. No. Here we go. Yeah. Yay, a dinosaur, and it's a red T Rex. It's a cyber T Rex. Don't you get it? Don't you get it, Chopa? Don't you get it, Chopa? It's the primitive cube. Hmm. Sure, why not? Dinosaurs and T-Rexes and the color red are cool. I'll take it. I it's take it's it. a T-Rex with a fucking laser eye beam. Okay, I'll oh, give you that, Sakaguchi. That yeah. looks awesome. That is awesome. Well, what the awesome. hell? No! Giant, no! Giant no! Snake. No! No! Are you serious? What? The the T-Rex farts and that then brings out a poo yes, dinosaur. I'm not even kidding, guys. If you kill the giant poo, the T-Rex will literally just shit out another one. I am well, not even kidding. This T-Rex literally attack. shit out snake shit. Seriously, this, what is- This T-Rex literally throws this shit out of us. Okay. Literally. Okay, 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 okay. Not just that. Not uh, just that the shit that this cyber dinosaur does is actually sentient. <laughs> not to mention the fact that he technically just farts and the poop drops from the sky. Someone actually wrote somewhere the T-Rex will shit out a giant snake poo that attacks you and no one in the development team better than I at this well apparently. okay 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 to be fair in some regards this could be considered like in some regards this could be considered crazy stupid awesome it's just eh. it's not well I don't know I mean the T-Rex himself is still cool but Really? Why would you give a mechanical T-Rex farting? You know, it's mechanical. I... I don't... And, uh... 
And uh, why is that Poop's crotch growling at us? Uh. <laughs> In this game raises so many questions, and all for the wrong reasons. Also, this game really has a thing for poop and farts. It does. I it's, have because no Akira, it's because of Kira Toriyama. There's the joke about uh, the poop in uh, Doctor's Lump and Arale. That's because yeah, of that. Yeah, it's a reference to Arale, Jova, basically. Uh, however, I have to, like Jova said it himself, I really have to commend his design of this T-Rex, though. Again, Akira Toriyama is the only one of the three key people of this game that manages to come out of this ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, he himself can be blamed for the poo shit. However, aside from the poo shit, I really like his artwork for this game. Again, the T-Rex, as Joe has pointed out, looks pretty cool. Um, and I still really like the hand-drawn artwork for the characters. But again, the art direction didn't really do a good enough job transitioning the artwork from um, to a character model. And I'll admit, the T-Rex also has some pretty unique battle animations. Not just that, it looks cheap as fucking as it constantly attacks you and loves to spam that laser. Yeah, the thing is, this boss is incredibly hard to do because that laser is gonna, in impossible mode, that laser is gonna kill you. A lot. So... Trust me. That laser, this fucking laser literally draws like about half of your HP of the entire party. And trust me, uh, trust me, sometimes the dinosaur will literally attack twice in one turn. So he can literally kill you in, in, in all at once if, if he happens to do this death move twice. So would you say this is the toughest boss in the entire game? No, that's be unfortunately I, I I can't because there's gonna be an even worse boss later on. Also, uh, too, notice notice that Kluke has a status effect. You know what that is? It's the stink status effect. Basically, if you get attacked a lot with, by poos, you get the stink status effect. Because because uh, you know if there, if I've ever I've always wanted a JRPG. Where you can literally uh, smell bad because of shit. So what is this thing? Yeah, what does it do? Is like poison? Uh, no. What it does is, it, I think it decreases your stats somewhat. But I think it makes you a. I, I think it. Um, I forgot what it does, but it. it, it get, I think it decreases some one of your stats or something. I, I don't, I, I, because, I, I, I mean, yes, shit aside, I could compare it, for example, to the oil status introduced in the Ivalice games that just makes you weak to fire and True, well, yeah. you're, you're basically covered in oil and shit. And stink status could maybe affect attraction rates on something in a game no, that's applicable I mean, to Joma, it? The problem, the problems are more like the implications of it. So, wow. so sure, thoughts on all this? This is hilarious. And we're being fired I mean, on by the poop. I mean, yeah, this true. is hilarious. In Dark Souls, when you get to Blind Town and you're basically you, all, the, all the way through, you're, you're, you're covered in shit because there are those. Sake. And uh, when you arrive at the end, uh, it's an entire swamp of shit. You're not going to be otherwise. So. But at least there was kind of an explanation for it. It's also, it's also similar to the body of the environment of Demon Souls. But here it's just yeah. because who toilet you more. Basically, I'm kind of getting desperate, so I'm using I'm abusing as the corporal attacks to see if I can somehow defeat this. Because trust me, this boss is hard as balls in the boss. Yeah, you could see also that you couldn't deal that much damage to the T Rex. So. Yeah. At least I killed the poo now. Unfortunately, uh, he can choose to make another one, and he will eventually. All right. What to do? Uh, I'm gonna use a healing item. Well, obviously, but what? I'm gonna revive clue or inside the heal of the others? I don't remember. It's been a while since. The needs of a mani or the needs of yeah, the needs of a mani. I'll be the needs of the All right, I'm back. Oh, you beat the poo monster. Unfortunately, Jova, he can shit out another one if he wants. He, he hasn't yet, though, so... Is there a defeat animation for the Poon Monster? There yeah, is. Uh, you, can go, you can go back in the video later if you want to see it. So, describe to me what happens. Basically, the Poo just falls and disappears. It's, nothing it's special, your standard the falling animation. Ah. Yeah, see what I mean? Even for the physical attacks, you deal, like... Very abysmal damage to the T-Rex. Yeah, this, this, this T-Rex this, this has very high defense. 
Uh, this is an interesting thing, Jail. Uh, at some points, it, it shows two targets on the T-Rex, where, where one of them, the target, is the eye. But I've never been able to select the eye. No, I tried selecting the eye. Maybe you needed to block the laser attack temporarily. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I couldn't... No, no, that was I, a good mine. Yeah, I, yeah, but I never... I'm, I, every time I tried, I could never select the eye for some reason. Maybe, maybe there's a specific trick to it that, that I can get if not I read a guide on it. Mold, not even with the mold down move? Uh, no. I, well, I'm not, well, I didn't try the mode down move. See, the thing is, Teo, the mode down move is weaker than a physical attack, so it's much better to use it on multiple targets rather than one. And you just shit out under poo. Jesus. The Tarso is still awesome, but... The game is, the game is literally throwing its shit at us. It's taking a dump of the genre. Uh... You see, you see, Teo, I'm guessing you're starting to realize now why it took me a long time to get Lost Odyssey. Yeah. I, I, gen I, I was genuinely angry and I just didn't, I, 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 when Lost Odyssey was about, I, I only later when I got a 360 specifically for Vesperia and Alan Wake. Only then did I finally got back and tried Lost Odyssey. No, no, I like, wouldn't would be it, it better, don't it, worry. I still think Lost Odyssey. Sh it, it, could you imagine if Lost Odyssey came out first? Maybe things would have been different, and maybe would Miss they Walker been... would still be doing well in the AAA business. I wonder. Wait, wait. wait. I mean, mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe things might have been worse, like a good game and then a bad game. I don't know. It's just. Uh, I really. Don't know. The beginning. That's I how really... it started. I really hate. Uh, Actually, I don't hate it. I just, I, I just, don't have a reason to care. I'm disappointed. Yeah. That's the thing she wrote. I actually have a reason to care I because know. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of the free key people behind this game. This game, it, like Macmento said in countless times, we have this playthrough. The fact that you get all of these people and you don't get a great game out of it is criminal. Yeah. I am glad that they managed to redeem themselves afterwards and each their own ways. Okay. Like I, like I said, in, there was your defeat animation for the. Play. Like I've said, like I've said in our Nino Kuni playthrough, um, that's why, uh, that, that's where I, I told that story in part eight of Nino Kuni, where I was so cautiously optimistic for Nino Kuni because Nino Kuni was very similar to this in the sense that it also uh, gathering a collaboration of a lot of different talented people. But so after the game, when the game was about to come out, I was trying my best to be cautious not to disappoint myself again. Always being myself, please don't suck. Please well, don't suck. Well, to be fair, to be fair, you're always gonna have that risk with a high-profile team. I know, I know. Game. That's what that's what this game taught me, Joe. That's what. Trust me, Joe. I learned that lesson from this game. Uh. See me. I got my first big bout of disappointment with the last Terminator movie, so. As bad as that yeah. was, that admittedly, see, that was based off of an amazing show. I mean, at the time, the live action adaptations I'd seen, while not the best, I always could rationalize that they were fun enough. For me, it was Dragon Ball Evolution in the, in the, in the previous year. Mm -hmm. That was my last Airbender, basically. Okay, let's see if we can finally kill this thing. Using Zola's bat. Uh, sorry, Teo, but this was before I realized I could actually skip these. No, don't no worry. Yeah, honestly, maybe, honestly, maybe honestly. Maybe if the game just allowed me to skip them right from the beginning instead of having me wait like 10 seconds before I can skip Honestly, them, maybe, uh... there is no shame whatsoever. These are the best animations there are to fight with. Hmm. And they're treated in the game as a privilege. <laughs> uh, please I'm... die. It's dead! Finally. Oh god. Oh my trust god, me. an actual- and Trust me guys, you're not, you're just seeing the final attempt, because it took me like seven attempts before I was able to kill this thing. In wow, the mode. boss even got a proper defeat animation, not just vanishing. Good job. The- okay. Oh, hmm. <laughs> what? Uh, Teo, uh, Wematsu is telling you to be intimidated. We are 
Uh, you only... know why I'm not intimidating? Because I checked a bit on the TV Drums character page. You know who's voicing a young Nene? Your young guys are not gonna believe this. Uh, I think it's an. I don't know. Lex Lang. I fought him. He's voicing this guy. <laughs> I thought I'd recognize that twang a bit, although he sounds more intimidating as Corte. He doesn't even sound like him. I mean, I know that like with a voice actor can use different inflations, but he sounds very different. So. Well, props to that swing. This is the most repetitive, boring voice oh, ever. Oh, hey! Every time he shows up, he always says the same thing. You humans are inferior. Ah, uh, we Asians are superior. I'm going to rule the world because I'm superior. <laughs> Oh, hey, that reminds me of Sephiroth, only without, you know, the actual level of threat Sephiroth showed. Except Sephiroth actually can say more than five, than the same five sentences over and over and over. Mother, 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 mother. Well, okay, okay, fine, aside from the mother thing. And then again, that's because of his mother issues. Etc, 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 etc. No, 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 that one was dropped, he dropped that after the revelation. Anyway. Reunion, 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 reunion. Yeah, we got each other. Now what? No. And now butterflies. Oh. oh, you could potentially get attacked after the boss fight. That's charming. You know, uh, speaking of Wexling, this is the perfect segue to talk about a good game. The Insane Trilogy? Yes! Uh, oh, ba hey. Basically, Shuri, it turns out that the team who made Crash to Insanity have been discussing possibly remaking that game with its cut content, and uh, the producer, Crash to Insanity, happens to be working at Vicarious Visions. Also, Keith Jeb sent in a letter requesting such, as well as a new piece of Crash to Insanity artwork hinting at a possible Insane Trilogy remake of Crash well, to Insanity. Well, that also depends on Activision. I mean, I know the, the, the recent news that they said they're open to more remasters, but uh, this uh, sounds very more specific. I'm not sure if you want to jump immediately on that. Well, considering how well the Insane Trilogy has no, been... No, I did. I'm just saying, sure, I don't know what we're going to prioritize first. Like, for example, we can easily go to Spiral next. Or it all depends on oh, what Activision nice actually wants. For example, Shiro, I, I, I mean, I would prefer <laughs> if we go, uh, well, technically also on Spiral, but also on Vigilante 8, which is one of our franchises we're not touching from years, almost a decade pretty much, but I know it's not going to happen because it's very obscure. Basically, though, the good news is that Twin Sanity is now back in the public eye to the point where there's even a hashtag, Save Twin Sanity, for it, and that is having my full support because, yes, a remake of Twin Sanity with all the cut content, that has been my life's dream ever since I found out about all the cut content from that game. Mm -hmm. Alright, now what? Oh, hey, now we got a vocal to... tune. Now we're going to go for the, um, the here so we can actually properly start the final dungeon. No, but seriously, there's a vocal team for the background here. That's cool. Welcome, everybody, to Primitive Cube Level 1, as in the, Floor 1. Yeah, the floor, this is Blue Dragon in the floor is lava. And immediately go back. That's because I want to save fine first. So instead of having dinner, we're actually playing this. Uh, I already had dinner by this point. This was this was recorded during one of our day offs. Okay. Here we go. So let me guess, you can actually step on the lava, but you get damage. Uh, no. Whoa. It, it, it's much like in typical JRPG stuff. You cannot fall into the lava. It, it, this is common in JRPGs, though. I'm fine. The music's actually pretty intense for this area. But the Gee, Jobo, it's the final. The it's it's the final dungeon, Joe. I wonder what the theme of this level is. It's well, just on the tip of my tongue. Well, Tail, at the very least, it's not like, at the very least, it's not just boring grey, despite being fire elemental. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh... so yeah, now we're fighting a robot spider turtle. with... Yeah. It's called turtle or something. It's spider turtle thingy. Whatever. 
Okay, so the gimmick with this dungeon is you have to constantly press switches to move platforms from one place to another. And you're supposed to always be pressing various switches to reach a specific combination of platform placements so you can properly progress for the dungeon. Let me guess, some of them are time limits before you can get No, them. no, 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 no. You have all the time in the world. You, you have all the time in the world. So technically speaking, the Great Crystal in Final Fantasy XII is, uh, is still worse in that regard. All those oh, weird very days. good, very good, Sakaguchi. You get a gold star. You did one thing better than Final Fantasy XII. I mean, a, don't get me wrong. A few the things, but not that much. Completionism, uh, it's it's fine, I guess, but it's just so brutal. Mhm. Mm All right, let's go. I'm gonna try my best to skip the monsters because I'm at the point I'm at a point where I'm just so completely sick of this game. I just want to get through it and just. I don't blame you. Oh. And you're maxed out anyway. Well, but yeah, I still remember it's in Gotham World mode and since so we're at the very final dungeon. That means when the enemies start being really bullshit. I'm really looking forward to recording more uh, Child of Light and then eventually Lost Odyssey. Yeah, basically audience were doing Child of Light after this. So. Which version I forgot you're playing? The PS4? The PS4 version. It's, okay. in my opinion, the definitive version. So there's version an ancient because, spell okay, called Lunar it, Eclipse apparently sealing that door. Uh... <laughs> the shoes of expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, Jova, what, what Lunar Eclipse? What? The no, door you went by, it said that it's sealed by a spell named Lunar Eclipse. Oh, yeah, okay. Basically, you're supposed to defeat, uh, get a certain item that's somewhere in this room, and you have to find it somewhere in the treasure chest. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, the, the, like I said, like I was saying, Teo, the PS4 version is, if you ask me, the definitive version, because it, you have all the comfortability of playing with a DualShock controller, while at the same time, thanks to the touchpad of the DualShock 4, you can still have touch controls for Igniculus. So it's, oh, it's, there's it's, actually it's, a use for that touchpad. Oh, actually, Joe, plenty of games make really, on the PS4 make really good use of the touchpad. Uh, and again, Child of Light is the perfect game for a con for the DualShock 4, considering uh, it's really useful on the Wii U version to use touch controls for Igniculus. But again, the game pad can be a bit uncomfortable for some people. I'm not saying uh, 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 for the game pad, but some people might find it a bit too big for them. So, however, again, you can, with the PS4, you can play with the comfortable DualShock controller, while at the same time not sacrificing the touch controls for Igniculus. So it's the best way to play the game, if you ask me. If you prefer that controller handset. And, it, and even if you don't want any touch controls whatsoever, you can still use the right analog stick. I'm guessing, Tail, you play the PS3 version? Sorry, can you repeat? The, oh, yeah, I'll try to light, yes. I did. So, you, so for you, it was the, the right analog The right analog I didn't mind, because from oh, what no. I needed to do with... Oh, uh, oh the, uh, the first version I played was also the PS3 version, but trust me, when, once, you, once you use touch controls for Igniculus combined with the DualShock 4's comfortability, what... you don't want to go back, because it's so much easier. Like, it... it, it, it it's 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 just so easy because literally at, at the thrust of one finger, you immediately get to where you want. Uh, with, uh, instead of just holding the the left for as for as long as it needs to. I wonder it, how it, it works in the PC version. Maybe it just separates keyboard. Uh, and the, the mouse. Yeah, it's the yeah. the mouse controls it ridiculous in the PC version, which really works as well. But I personally prefer playing uh, with only one controller on my two hands. So. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Inventory is full. So yeah, the item is not there. We have to look some uh, someplace else. Darn it. Jova, use your positivity <laughs> to try to liven up this commentary. I'm, I've ran out of things to say. Me too, at this point. Mm, well, the music here is definitely fitting, and that's a good so thing. Nice. I mean, I guess it makes sense with the fire motif, but it's just weird. Hmm. There you go. It's where of course, it needs to be on these convoluted. Oh, trust me, Tail. Um, it's gonna get even more convoluted later on. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't mind uh, this puzzle, but at this point, uh, with this particular game and setting and everything, it's just excruciating to the yeah, player. Yeah, trust me, Teo. At this point, I was completely just end. Just end. Just end. Like just end. Like ends anyway. Mm. Well, I had. Well, well, that's the thing, Shiwai. Um, it's not. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. When I eventually got the game again, so I could play all the way through it, it was for one specific reason. So I could properly get. Re uh, for so I could probably finally play the game all throughout. So I had full authority to judge the game. Um, and second, uh, it also helped so that I could actually play it for the channel as well. Because I, I, I'm the only one here with an Xbox One, so obviously it would be up to me since this game is much better than the Xbox One. Trust me, there's a lot of frame rate hiccups in the, from the 360 original release that you're not seeing. There are a few, but probably as bad. Mm -hmm. No, 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 sure. Remember, you you didn't really see any frame rate issues in this version, but trust me, if, if I showed you the 360 version, um, just uh, basically just go to YouTube and check Blue Dragon 360 versus 1, and there will be a side by side comparison so you can see for yourself. Also, this enemy is annoyingly because every single time you strike him, it counters with a beam. It's It, it, it does nothing to prolong the battle. Ugh. This game is just doing everything in its power to keep me under its claws for as much as possible. <laughs> there we go, we got the Ancient Amber Moon. Basically, another thing with this dungeon is in order to get through these those doors, you have to get the Ancient Emblems that open them. Okay. Uh, I have no idea why the hell uh, Nene just left the keys to the doors. Uh, right, I mean, which but, uh, reinforced the theory that he's completely bipolar in terms of uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. My God, I'm. Uh, this, the, the, the dungeon itself, uh, for as good as the music is, the dungeon itself is boring. Uh, probably because whenever I get to this point, I'm already so completely tired. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm... Oh, that's right, I'm finishing recording, but wait. Oh, never mind, I'm still deciding to do something. Yet. Oh, that's right, I was I was waiting for the spider to get out of my way so I didn't have to battle it. There you go, that's what I was doing. Alright. Now let's open this door. The door has been unsealed. Er, er, er. Sorry, I'm so desperate at this point. Alright everybody, in the, ne in the next part we move even deeper into the primitive cube and... Well actually no, it's, it's in part 25 that we find that boss that I'm looking forward to showing yeah. you guys. So, see you everybody.